are going to start off by making our cheese sauce. So we're going to use carrots and some potatoes. I just prefer gold potatoes for the color. And we're going to add in some water and just boil that up until the potatoes are nice and fork tender. About like 15 minutes of cooking. Then into a blender, we are going to add in cashews. I boil these for like 10 minutes to get them soft, or you can soak them overnight, whatever you want, but it just makes it easier on the blender to give you a creamier sauce if you soak or boil them ahead of time. So I would suggest doing that, especially if you don't have a high-speed blender. Then we're gonna add in our cooked potatoes and carrots. And the potatoes give such a nice, thick consistency to, this, consistency to this sauce. You're gonna see it's so cheesy and creamy, it's ridiculous. Then we're adding in plant milk. I like almond milk. Make sure it's unsweetened and plain flavored because otherwise you're gonna end up with vanilla tasting cheese and that's pretty gross. <laughs> then I'm adding in some salt and garlic powder. And you may need to add in a little more salt after you blend it up and see, you know, you can adjust, but start out slow and add in more as you need to. Next up, we are going to add in nutritional yeast, which is like vital to this whole thing. It's what makes it taste cheesy. It gives it a yellow color. You have to get this if you are a vegan. It's important for you. It has a lot of B12 and some paprika for the color. And now we are just going to blend that all up and you may need to add a little bit more almond milk in just to get it really smooth. And there we go. Just like, look at this. Look at it like move. Oh, it was so good, this sauce. So into a pan, I'm gonna add some vegan butter, a little bit of vegan Parmesan cheese. I like the one from Follow Your Heart. I feel like it tastes the best. And some more plant milk. Again, I'm using almond milk. And we're just gonna mix this together until it's kind of like melted down. It just gives another dimension of flavor to our mac and cheese, but you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I figured for a party, you know, go big or go home. And then we're gonna add in our cheese sauce to that and mix it all around and so, so good, so cheesy, so creamy, absolutely delicious. So then I just took some of the cheese sauce out so I could save that for dipping the pretzel balls in later. And then I'm taking my cooked pasta. I did about a, pan, a, quart, a cup and a half of cooked pasta. And now we can just mix this all together and make it all creamy and gooey. And oh, look at this. Look at this stuff, guys. No dairy in here. Could you believe it? Could you? Oh, it was so good. I know you guys are going to really love it. Now we need to get the mac and cheese to cool off a little bit. So we're just going to put it in muffin tins. And I'm putting about like a tablespoon to two tablespoons in there. And then we're just going to pop that in the freezer for like an hour. Just so we can work with the mac and cheese a little bit better. Then I'm putting some flour down. And we're going to spread pizza dough out. So this is going to be how we make our pretzels. Super easy to make pretzels. So I'm just taking my pizza dough, rolling it around and squishing it up and, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be super thin, but we just want to be able to get 12 pieces out of this dough. So this was about 12 ounces of dough, so about an ounce per ball. And once you feel like it's good, I just cut the dough in half. And then I cut that half into six pieces. And I tried to keep them, like as equal as I could. And then I'm gonna cut them into the six pieces and I'm gonna roll those six pieces into balls. And then we're just gonna like kind of reflower the surface as you need to and just start to like press it down with your hands and roll it with the rolling pin. And you're just making like a nice little mini pizza, if you will. And then we are taking our little bit of mac and cheese that's going to come out super easily because it was only in there for an hour but now it's kind of nice and firm so you can kind of wrap the dough around it and then pinch the sides in and then kind of form it into this ball the biggest thing is you don't want to have a giant open seam you want everything to kind of like mush in together that's why i'm pinching with my fingers right here so this way when you boil the pretzel balls the mac and cheese doesn't kind of explode everywhere so yeah and if you add in a little too much mac and cheese don't worry just kind of like take some of the noodles out and roll again and you might need to like reflower your hands and everything so it's okay you get the hang of it and it's not hard at all so now we're going to add five cups of water 
to a pot and two tablespoons of baking soda. The baking soda is what's gonna turn this pizza dough into a pretzel. So once it's boiling, I added in three of the um, pretzel ball dough things in at a time and I'm just gonna let those cook for about two to three minutes. They kind of like start to float around and they get golden brown. Yeah, that's when you know they are done. And then you just wanna scoop them out. Best to do this with a slotted spoon because you can drain off all the water. So we're gonna scoop those out and I'm just gonna continue this process until I have done it to all of my little pretzel balls. And as you can see, no mac and cheese is like floating around or anything and that's exactly what we want. That's why having such a tight seam is important but if you have like little holes, it's okay. The macaroni is not gonna escape. So yeah. Then here's all my little pretzel balls done. I'm adding some more vegan parm and a little bit of plant milk just to give it a nice color. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes on at 450 until it's really, really golden brown. And look at these beauties they're so beautiful and golden i'm adding more vegan parm because why the heck not and i like a little bit of green so i'm adding some dried parsley and that is pretty much it for these guys so beautiful so delicious my mom was so loving these she was like wow it doesn't even taste it's fake or anything so good and they're so cheesy in the middle the only thing i forgot to do is spray the bottom so spray your pan because otherwise the dough is going to stick